Welcome back, everyone, to Blue Collar Startup. I am your co-host, Mike Nelson, here with Visionary and, no, yeah, Visionary co-host was the word I was looking for, and founder of Blue Collar Startup, Derek Foster. Hey, Mike, how are you? I'm good. I'm I'm listening to the beep, beep, beep right now of the uh, newspaper truck pulling up to deliver newspapers. Right on schedule. Right on schedule. Those guys never fail to to show up right when we start recording. (laughs) It's amazing. Thank, thank you down there at the the Gazette. So you look very well rested. How's the? Uh, are you being Are you being per- facetious? No, I'm being serious. So uh-huh. how's the? Uh, <laughs> well, you have a million things going on. We don't really talk about all of them. Too many. So how's the the brewery going? The brewery project. Uh, we've hit a snag. Oh, okay. a small snag. We we so we basically, you know me, high speed online. I'm just pushing, yeah. pushing, pushing, and so I was where I was trying to make us brew a at least one batch of beer every single week um which we we can't even drink that much beer i mean it's so much beer in in hard cider uh so we were we were pushing it but what was happening is there there kept being these small little things that were happening that was the beer wasn't coming out amazing and uh, what we found out is that we have a bit of a temperature control issue which we didn't know we had because our thermostats that we're using were completely frogged up so like we thought we were on temp and we weren't getting the results that we wanted. And, uh, so finally we figured this out. So in a fit of rage, uh, over yet another batch of beer that didn't come out the way that it was planned, uh, we decided, uh, to gut, I'm gutting the whole building and re-insulating it. And so that's, yeah. that's what I'm doing this weekend basically is, uh, gutting this whole I thing. You're, and you're going to say you threw or kicked the equipment or something. No, 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 nothing That's like good. that. I know my fit of rage. No, it was literally, I just got so pissed off and I was like, F it. Yeah. I'm just, we're going to gut this place. We're going to spray foam it because whatever the stuff that's in there is not, I don't even know if there's any, we haven't gutted it yet. So, um, I basically, my, my fit of rage was moving all the equipment from the brew room out into the main room. And, uh, so yeah, and then this weekend I'm going to go in there Saturday morning basically and, and gut the whole damn thing, figure out what's in the walls, which I'm guessing is nothing, is the reason why we can't hold the temperature in there. And then I'm going to spray foam it, put the put the walls back up, and uh, I'm going to put in a new furnace, some sort of new heating system there because that's the other part. The heating system just can't when the colder temperatures hit, it just can't keep up. It's just running 24 hours a day and still not hitting temp. So, so that's where we are. Nice. But I do have <clears throat> gallons of hard cider that I'm drinking on an almost daily basis right now. So <laughs> that's the update. Gotta love sustainable farming. Oh my god, I know. Yeah, there's always an issue, man. Like the yeah. other day, so we had the roof come off the back of the barn, and it closed, basically trapped all my animals in the stalls because I can't open the doors because there's this mat. Because you know what happens is it got warm, and then right like probably after i went to bed at like nine o'clock it all slid off the roof and then it got cold out so by the time i got up in the morning i went i was out there at night shutting the barn up there was no snow it was all on the roof when i got out there in the morning it had come off the roof was probably a three and a half to four foot pile that was so hard it might as well be cement so i was like oh my god so i can't get the animals out of the stalls so they were like trapped in there for like a day and uh, my son and i went and on the inside of the barn, we basically had to create gates that weren't there before. And there's just always some stupid little issue like that where it's like, oh, now I got to do gates today instead of doing the chicken coop I was planning on building for the chicks I have and in the brooder and blah, 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 blah. <laughs> so, yeah. Anyway, that's my farming story for the day, I guess. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's not a, how, the, how the insulation goes. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah. yeah. But uh, excited for... Uh, our podcast today it's been a while we've been trying to get dustin in here i know i was telling him i was apologizing to him about my reschedule your reschedule it's just been nuts this this started what last spring dustin (laughs) yeah as soon as you uh it's probably one of your first podcasts yeah and uh yeah and i reached out and uh he was so busy you know obviously waited till um you know the the winter months and didn't slow down <laughs> so not here not here much. we are almost a year later so uh excited to have dustin from manny topsoil and, and gravel here with us yeah today. thanks for coming man thanks for being so uh patient and understanding on the reschedules so <clears throat> i know how it goes it's part of my business so yeah it's been crazy it's been crazy and by the way i got to give you a compliment so i was on your website checking your stuff out i love those sliders that you have the before and after sliders oh yeah that's oh, cool yeah, yeah, man yeah. yeah i uh 
I, I hooked up with another uh, buddy of mine, owned a uh, OOMDO, digital marketing company, but he actually got me started, known a long time, I, you know, from the uh, the Facebook and advertising and all that stuff. Yeah, yeah. So he, he, he really did the, the build on it, so I got to give credit to him. Yeah, it's pretty uh, cool, man. I love that slider. I just, it's weird because I just saw that the other day on someone else's site. Yeah. I was like, wow, I'm like, that's a cool function. I'm going to have to add that to the toolbox. And then I saw it, and you're just yeah. like, man, that is cool. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. People, people like the, <clears throat> versus um, seeing about somebody's business, people like to see before and after. Mm-hmm. I, I do a lot of content with Facebook, and you know, I like to show projects before and after because people say, "Yeah, this is you know, that's what I want." Yeah, like, nobody cares about your company; they want to know what yeah. you can do, you know, what they can do for them. Yeah, and something we can offer. You know, yeah, super like cool, man. So, uh, so you know, tell the listeners, uh, uh, give us a little bit about your background, who you are, what your business is, what you do. Uh, it's Dustin Manny. I own Manny Topsoil and Gravel. Um, it's probably started about 2016 as a uh, as a side business, and we were doing uh, a lot of small gravel and topsoil deliveries. I started out with a small truck. We I, I had originally called it We Dig Small Gigs, and it it didn't, <laughs> it didn't really last too long. It probably lasted you know a couple of deliveries, and you know people will. Uh, you know, we were doing small projects and we, you know, we're putting out good work and, um, you know, which is spiral to bigger, you know, bigger trucks, more equipment, more demand. And it's, uh, you know, I, uh, I was friends, you know, am friends currently and had been for a long time with the, uh, with the Valenti family and they were a big, uh, part of the growth of my business, which I don't have no problem saying, um, they would, uh, they are a bigger trucking company. They would send me all their uh, small deliveries and, you know, anything they could do to help me out. And they were uh, pretty intricate in the, uh, the growth of my, my company. But, you know, it's uh, we kept dumping money or I kept dumping money into the business as I saw growth and, you know, expanded uh, you know, to other things. Like I said, now we're getting into paving and, you know, more commercial work and, uh, you know, foundations and things like that. So it's constantly growing. And, yeah. You know, but it was uh, a lot of work. You know, it's uh, working seven days a week. You know, usually it started. Uh, uh, I it was like I said, it was a side business. I had a, a main business uh, is doing medical device sales, and then it was kind of you know split where I was doing a lot of work on the weekends and then after work, and then it just uh, it really blew up. You know, and where I focus mainly on the construction end. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, Dustin is a prime example of if you you know go the extra mile and put the time and the effort in. I mean, it you know it, it's really amazing what you can accomplish. You know, working a full time job and you know moonlighting, doing what you can, and then you know now here you are. Fast forward, how many years has it been? <clears throat> I think they said six, we started 16. back in two thousand sixteen. Um, so I, you know, I, I had started in the construction industry probably when I was 16, 17 years old, mm-hmm. you know, if, if not earlier, just work for other guys. And, you know, I always wanted to work on my own and, and work for myself and have my own business. And, you know, I learned for different guys in the area, whether it was mason guys, builders, landscape guys. And, uh, you know, it's just something I always like being in, you know, and it's when you're working seven days a week in a own business and you're, you know, you're seeing results. You know, you want to continue to grow in the business. You know, I, it, it's uh, something I like to do. Yeah. yeah. I you def- It's definitely easier to work 24 hours a day, seven days a week for yourself <laughs> oh, yeah. than for somebody yeah, else, yeah, yeah. for sure. You know, it's, uh, it's, it's been good. You know, it's, uh, I got a lot of support with my wife. You know, that, that, that it's the caveat where, um, you know, she's, we've been together for uh, 10 years now, and she knew how it was 10 years ago. She knew what she was getting into. <laughs> and uh, she knew the seven days a week. You know, it's not, you know, whether you're doing estimates, you're doing jobs, you're, you're, you're fixing, you know, you're fixing problems, you know, you're, you know, you want to take care of your business. So it's, it's really, you know, 12, 15 hours a day. You know, people say that, but it's no, it's no joke. You know, I'm working literally seven days a week, you know, and starting in a couple of weeks and then it doesn't end to die down until December. And then by the time you're, you know, you're getting, you think you're getting cleaned up, you're done. Somebody's got another job for you. You're not going to turn around. And it just, you know, it, it, it's not, it's year round. You yeah. Know? And it's, I just brought on a new guy. 
I told him we cram in twelve months in a nine, eight, nine months because we just yeah. work so yeah. much. You know, there's you know, it's what I do. And if it's, I, I've gone through employees, and you know, if you're not willing to work, I don't want you. <laughs> yeah, right. That's what it, it's yeah. you know, I'm very particular about my work. You know, I, you know, we're putting a name out there, a brand that we're looking to continue to build and grow on, and you know. You gotta stay sharp. You gotta look good, and you gotta keep your name out there. Every job is a testimonial for the next job, right? Like, oh yeah, you know. I mean, you know, go back to the advertising. We do a ton of advertising, Facebook, Google AdWords. You know, people think I got fifty trucks. I got one truck, but it's you know, well, actually, I got two trucks. But they're they're going up and down the Northway, and yeah. you know, across the capital district so much. You know, it's. You know, we could justify probably two or three more, but you know, we're that's how busy we are, just running all over the place, and you know, it's good. Hopefully, it continues on. Yeah, and I, you know, it's I'm curious to hear a little bit more about the transition from uh, what were you, you were doing before with medical device sales, because I think that's a lot of. Um, and Derek and I've talked, and we've had a few guests on that. You know, so many companies and business owners that we've had on the show that have said that you know, hey, I I was doing this other thing. This was my side hustle. And it, you know, slowly or sometimes quickly transitioned into a full-time gig. And I know that I, or I don't know, I believe that's a big question for a lot of people that are kind of moonlighting a little bit here, doing a couple jobs and they really want to make that transition. They want to make that jump, that leap. And I know it looks a little different for everybody. Like, um, Devin, you know, I, I think of his example where he just, he had gotten a big job that was going to go on for six or seven months. So that gave him the ability to jump from what he was doing as an administrator into construction full time. And then he knew like when he made that jump, he's like, well, I got six months basically to start backing jobs up behind that one. I, I'd love to hear about what that transition looked like for you. Well, I, I had been doing, I've been in the medical device industry for probably about 15 years. And I, I was always, you know, it was something I want to get into. I sold copiers. I worked for Xerox for two years. I lived out in Las Vegas. Came back from Vegas, moved down to New York City. There's no medical device down there. We sold all neurosurgery products. Uh, hooked up with a distributorship uh, out of the city, and it, that was going real well for a long time. We were doing good, and, and it gave, afforded me the ability to start a business on the side because you know the medical business wasn't really hands on. You know, mm -hmm. we were selling, and there wasn't there wasn't a whole lot of gratification to it, but you know. I always wanted to be in the construction and so what, what started out as, you know, doing deliveries after work and on the weekend, you know, it was rushing to, to, to do my main job with the devices to doing, you know, the construction end of it with these little jobs that I would go in and do in and out in like a couple hours. And then towards the end, it got to the point where I could easily justify the transition. Mm -hmm. It wasn't, it was just like... You know, COVID, it was actually around COVID. And when people could no longer leave their house, mm -hmm. I saw it as an opportunity that, you know, if people aren't going to be going on a vacation, they're going to start spending money, whether it be at their business or at their house. Yeah. And it was at that time where, you know, um, I had dumped, you know, I was I stopped the medical the business. I got into the, the construction and I just blew up on advertising and it was just all out from there. So there really wasn't, I, I, I had the support financially that, you know, I had money behind me mm -hmm. um, that I had saved up. And it was, it was an easy transition because I was, I was already turning down big jobs. Like I couldn't do, I couldn't do a, a, a one, two, three day job because I, I, I didn't have the time to do it. Sure. I was taking care of my main job, but then I couldn't dedicate full time to the other thing. So I couldn't afford to take on the bigger projects because like only from a timing standpoint, mm -hmm. you know, I want to dedicate one job at a time and, you know, treat each, uh, customer, you know, not be all over the place. So then when I was at full time, I mean, uh, business had grown when I focused mainly on that, you know, it, it was, I think when I looked at the historical data a couple of weeks ago, I mean, we went from, we grew, uh, I think from 2020 to 2021, I think we grew like 50%. And then the following year, we grew 75% year over. So, the tr you know, year over year, mm -hmm. it, I, I, it, was, it was amazing, you know, how much it can, and I, and I hope it continues to grow. I think it will. We're, I mean, we're pulling bigger jobs, but, you know, from the transition standpoint, it, it was it was pretty easy. But 
you know, every year's a new year. You, you know, you got goals. You want to grow, continue to grow 25%, I mean, which is my goal. Um, but, you know, you don't know what's going to yeah. happen. You know, well, that's that, that was the question, too, as you're saying that, you know, so we just uh, recorded a Buying Local podcast, uh, Buying Local Saratoga with Mark Landau. And uh, he was, you know, he's a finan- you know, financial planning guy. And he uh, we were talking about, you know, the whole are we in a recession? Are we not in a recession? Are we heading towards a recession? Do we even care? And um, I, that's so I was curious, like, you know, with everything that's been happening and changing the last 90 to 120 days does that affect your business at all like do you see with the real estate market shifting is are things shifting for you or no not at all because it, it goes it, i think you know they're trying to reduce uh inflation by stopping people from you know building houses and buying cars by raising interest rates <clears throat> if people aren't building houses they're going to be fixing their own house. right they're going to spend know, more time spending their money own. in their own business or job so yeah. i see there's another opportunity we're just going to attack Nice. You know, I just like I said, we started the advertising you know, about a month ago, and we're just waiting for you know spring blows up. Yeah. And uh, but I no, guess... I, I don't think it because you know you go out to restaurants now, you can't get a seat. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, people aren't going to stop yeah. going away. Yeah. What a the, weird shift it was, it, right? Yeah. You know, I, I think it's a good thing. I mean, you know, it's not a good thing for people looking to buy houses because rates are so high. But you know, it's. Uh, uh, for my business, and I think you know some small contractors or people looking to do work, uh, I, I see it as an opportunity where people, you know, they're gonna want to spend money. They're not spending big money, sure. you know, but they're gonna continue to do what they're doing. Sounds like uh, everything's an opportunity if you see it that way. I guess that's that's why I keep hearing from people. It's right? Right, yeah, it's the right mentality. Yeah, yeah. So, um, so you transition full time, growing like gangbusters. What do you think is one of the biggest challenges that you've been seeing, you know, throughout this growth period the last couple of years? Uh, the investment in the capital for my business is very high, you know. And people yeah, those want, trucks aren't cheap, are they? You no, know, trucks aren't cheap. You know, <laughs> uh, 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 the, one of my newer trucks, you know, worth almost a quarter million dollars. Now mm-hmm. they've, they've gone up to almost three hundred thousand. Yeah, you know, yeah. cat. Milton Cat, you know, everything is so expensive, you know, so for, you just got to take the risk, you know, I, I got a good buddy of mine who we came close with who, who's probably, you know, I look like, I look at him like, you know, me when I was 27 years old, mm-hmm. so, you know, I'm trying to, it's hard to get into this business because it's so expensive, Yeah. right, and I, well, as I built my business, I bought a piece of equipment, I paid off, I never got ahead of myself, and, but you got to take risks, so I'm like, I'm at the point where I buy it and figure it out on the way down. <laughs> you know, and it's, it's you know, and it's kind of like I've learned so much over the years of, you know, having to figure things out on my own. And, you know, I'm about the security now where I'm getting more into real estate for the financial stability where I don't have to worry about what's going to happen this year. But, you know, when you're not worried about it and you're prepared, and you know, it's it only seems to get better. Yeah. You know what I mean? I just I put myself out there you know, for any opportunity. And if there's an opportunity for me to make money, I want to take it. Yeah. That's like the, the cycle, you know, you grow to a certain point and then it's like, okay, I need this piece of equipment to get to the next level. And, you know, taking the risk and doing that, it lights the fire to, to just keep going. You know, it's, it's always there and it never ends. Cause as soon as you get to a certain point, it's like, we got to keep going. We're too busy. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I, it's funny. Cause recently like, I keep saying to my team and to my business partners, I'm like, I'm so freaking uncomfortable right now. And, uh, cause we're on a growth mode and we just hired people yeah. and, you know, we just, our overhead just went up cause of staff and labor and stuff like that. You know, we got to make sure we keep the machine. You got to keep feeding the machine with new clients and new business. And, uh, I just keep, I'm just like, man, I was so comfortable like six months ago. I didn't worry about n- anything. And now I'm just like, stressed out every day again and what's funny though thing. well yeah i know and that's the funny part right is that as soon as we get to a point where i'm not stressed out anymore i'm like well this sucks like we need to grow some more so let's get some let's let's do it again so that i'm stressed out some more all the time it's great that's why i'm launching the brewery i guess so I, <laughs> at least i always have free beer to drink yeah i mean i mean th- this year we're you know we were doing uh not kind of stay on the same track but you know we're getting a paving now where it was something like you know, when you get in this business, you always see opportunity to, to mm-hmm. go down on the path. And, you know, knowing what it takes to grow in a segment where it's kind of like we do, 
we do like a, a lot of excavation and grading and hydro seed and lawn development and then it's people are like while you're there do you do pit driveways mm-hmm. you know, yeah i mean we can do them and then you know like hydro seed and we were subbing it out to another company and we're subbing out you know we're doing the site work and we're yep. doing the prep and then we hire a company to come in and, and do the paving and you know that's a segment where we're going to start focusing on because it, it can be part of our, our overall portfolio what's well, complementary to what you're doing now yeah so i mean we're not we're a little bit different where you know we try to be in and out focus on one company you know one project at a time mm-hmm. we're not we're not a you know six months we're a, a seasonal business so we're in and out fast money move on to the next one yeah and you know it's that that's like i liked it you know it's like where i want to be and you know we're like i said we're non-stop with it and it's hopefully it continues on yeah right so how many employees do you have now it's just two just two. Yeah. And listen, and, two, and, and two's plenty. Two, yeah, two's <laughs> plenty. And, and, and what I realize is we, uh, we've we had more, but the problem is is that you get a diminishing return. The mm-hmm. more guys, you know, I I also own a, a party rental company called Jersey Tents. Oh, oh, yeah? So part of a three-part, you know, th- I own three businesses. So and it got the point where... Oh, sorry, guys. <clears throat> Rude. Where, you know, more companies didn't mean, and, and, and what do we do? More productivity. And... It was the more you have, the less each guy did, mm-hmm. right? So it slowed you down. And, and I see with a lot of companies and even bigger, you know, companies that I know, they're one, two man crews, whether they're a construction company or they're, they have to worry about this, a guy show up, you know, countless, whether it be paving, construction, excavation, whatever, you, you got to worry about your guys showing up mm-hmm. where, and it happens they'll either show the call in sick. There a number of stories where it can impede your day, like, you know, like no other but if you have one or two guys and i know that i can still you know i'm the main point i need an assistant to help me along and we're mm-hmm. looking to grow and add more guys but you know i believe that if you if you take care of your employees and you pay them well yeah. then they're gonna you know i i want them you know the guy that i have that i just brought on and i explained to him as we grow you'll grow and as we bring in more guys i'm going to treat each guy the same way and but you're going to work and if you're not yeah. going to work this is a place real you know so yeah i know we've been hit by a rash of vacation time recently (laughs) (laughs) it's fine you know we we and we do give uh a good amount of vacation time to our team because you know that's you know we we've asked our team like what what do you guys want you want a raise or you want you know pto and they're like i want pto man like i don't need another two bucks an hour i need another week's vacation so we started coming up with ways to give more vacation that was funny because we had like Mm -hmm. We came out of the holidays and I'm like, all right, let's hit the ground. Let's get, you know, we're a little behind because of the holidays. So let's get caught up. And then it's like, well, so-and-so is on vacation this week. So, all right, so we're slowed on that one. And then someone else goes on vacation. I mean, it was literally like three or four weeks in a row. We had someone out on vacation. I was like, oh my God, man, all this damn PTO. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, I, I, I want to, you know, my goal is uh, we want to grow and we want to, you know, eventually I would, I'd like to be a very big company. Yeah. But, you know, it, it's... If you try to get too big too quick, you, your productivity, I find, is, you know, and I've seen it over the years where it's not the same uh, output, mm-hmm. quality goes down, and I like to be the main point in every job, you know, and if if you could build a, you know, uh, a company where you just, you get guys in order, you have organization in your company, you know, from top down, yeah, you know, that's, that's kind of where you want to be at. You know, I look at a lot of bigger guys in the capital district that I, you know, I admire. Like, again, Valenis, you know, um, I've looked after him for, you know, a long time, admire him very, very much. And, um, you know, I, I like to, you know, have somebody, a goal to go after. And he's a guy I admire. You know, he's got 50 to 100 trucks. But, you know, you look at the history with him. He was a, he, he started on his own. One guy, one truck and a bulldozer. And you look at him now. And he's, yeah. you know, he's all over the place. And, uh you know, that's kind of where I want to be at. Yeah, so there's that. some monster companies in this area that started out just that way. Yeah, yeah. One guy in a pickup truck, yeah. and now there are hundreds of employees, some of them. Oh, so yeah. it's it's amazing, and yeah, certainly uh, to be respected for sure. Well, that, you know, that, that that's a good part about being, you know, uh, around here where I've met a lot of bigger companies, whether it be pavement companies. It's the same story. You know, you know I, I love to pick guys' brains or research a company, and no matter what big company around here, it was the same thing. Mm-hmm. Whether they're, they're, their grandfather, 
uh, grandparents working together, you know, started with a truck or mm -hmm. one paver or whatever it was. And, you know, you think these guys started as a big company. They didn't, you know, they're like, you know, we started with a, a, a garbage, you know, not a new truck, you know, not a new paver, mm -hmm. you know, and then you just, you work nonstop and uh, you grow. And then one truck becomes two trucks and three trucks. And then, you know, but it's not an over. I, it's funny because the, the bucket arm on your on your shirt it makes me so I was trying to find a, a mini excavator for the farm. And you're talking about the cost of equipment. <laughs> Do you know how much mini X's are going for right now? Oh, it's insane. It's insane. I couldn't find a used one for under forty thousand yeah. dollars. And I was like, I go to I go to a guy I know over at the Falls Farm and Garden. I'm like, yeah, you know, I'm looking for like a mini X, like you know, like in that fifteen to twenty range. He just laughed at me. He goes, no, Mike, that doesn't exist anymore, man. Like. Yeah. Pre-COVID, you could find them. Post-COVID, they don't exist. Well, I mean, Cat, they can't keep equipment. A buddy of mine, you know, he's, he works in finance or whatever. They can't keep, as, as expensive as they are, mm -hmm. they can't keep equipment on the lot. Wow. You know, it, I mean, that just shows you where the economy's at right now. There's so much demand yeah. for every field right now that they can't even keep equipment on. And you're not talking... Fifty thousand. You're talking no, you're, from a hundred to a million dollars. Right, a huge monster. Yeah, yeah. yeah. it's so, amazing. You know, when, when they say the economy is down, kind of people are still spending money. They're just. I keep I keep seeing the car lots are still pretty empty. I don't see that inventory right. growing. Like, it's crazy, man. It's crazy. So, uh, you know, we kind of talked about what the you know challenges that you're seeing. What do you, what do you think uh, the secret to your success is? <clears throat> um. I think just working hard. Yeah. I really. And I, I, I don't, I, I emphasize that where, you know, I, I've got constant headaches, you know, and it's only because I'm taking on more, but you know, you're, you're constantly, you're learning how to manage it. Um, but if the only way to get bigger is you got to keep pushing, you know, you got to, you know, going back to the advertising, advertising more, get your name out there, keep pushing, mm -hmm. you know, just work hard and take risk. You know, it's not, it, it's not, I have, you know, back, back up is I have no, the only, I started this on my own and financially and working hard and, you know, it, it's grown because of the work that I've done. And it's, it's hard because I have two little kids at home, my wife, and during the season, she knows that she's not going to see me that much. Mm -hmm. That's the that that's the downside to when you own your own business and you're getting started is that you know I spend all my time I rush home I might not get home until eight nine o'clock at night because I'm running to do jobs look at you know look at jobs collect from jobs I mean there there's probably ten things a day that I'm doing and you know the downside is that I don't see my family enough but you know my my wife's great support and you know I'm trying to build for when my kids are a little bit older and you know we can afford. Uh, you know, I could afford to take the time to spend more time with them. And that's mm -hmm. where the real estate comes in and that, that end of it. But, you know, it, right now it's hard because of that. You know, I don't see them, but some people don't want to take that risk. I mean, you, you know what it's like to run a business. You know, you know it's, uh, you got to, I put the time in now. So later, hopefully it pays off. Yeah. You know, so that's, you know, from the financial part, you got to, you know, roll your money. You got to continue to invest in the business and you got to hope that you're doing the right things and people are uh, happy with the projects you're doing and, uh, you know, that it continues to grow. But, you know, if you're not willing to work, it's very hard to grow a business, you know. It's not for the faint of heart, that's it's for not, sure. You know, it's, it's tough. I mean, during the season, it's funny because... You know, I, I don't even have to work out because I lose so much weight on the amount that I work or the yeah. amount of stress that I go through. But the stress you know, and you don't have time to eat. So, like, you know, like I'll, I'll get to all it's like four o'clock in the day. I'm like, holy shit, I haven't eaten yet. Like get my one meal in for the day here. Oh, yeah. I mean, I, I'm up at I'm up at four. You know, I got my day planned out. I'm up at four in the morning. And by the time you know, I get out by five, five thirty. And by the time I get home, it's nine o'clock. And I might eat one thing a day. Yeah. I just don't have time to stop because, you know, it's. You know, we got so much to do with that to get the jobs done on to the next one. So like you can't, can't take a break, you know. Yeah. That's tough. I, I do know. Break. <laughs> <laughs> I do, man. Yeah, you wake up every morning, like, you know, you're going to get punched in the face. It's just where, you know, where's it coming from, you know, and you keep moving. So I'll tell you, I got to yeah. ask you guys a question, actually, on that. Lately, 
it's just not a single thing that I do lately where something doesn't try to get in my way, slow me down or stop. And I'm not even kidding you. It could be like, I'm going to go get a drink of water. And on the way there, I'm going to get to the water jug, but it's empty. Right. Or, uh, I, I I'm trying to think of like the zillion examples. Like I'm going to go outside to do something, but now well, one of the dogs took my shoe and I don't know where the, my shoe is. And so I'm wandering around looking for my, like, yeah. does that happen to you guys? I've, I've been yeah. asking everybody. I'm like, is it just me? Or like, uh, do you see that? It, yeah, it happens. Does it happen constantly? Dear? I mean, is it I, everything? Cause I think maybe I've offended the, the, the gods or the universe or whatever in some <laughs> fashion. Like, man, what the hell's going on? No, it's, it's easy to get. Yeah. I think there's so many moving pieces sometimes that, you know, and it's, it's not all positive stuff, but you have to have that positive mindset. But yeah, think, yeah. you know, the way that you think and and look at it, I think that's what will happen. So like if you're in a bad mood someday and, or one day and you, you start feeling a lot of negative stuff happening and it just kind of snowballs, you know, but flipping back over on and looking at the bright side and the positive side, having gratitude and, and it's what usually gets me through. That's what gets you, you know? through. Yeah. Dustin, what about you? What do you do when things are really, uh, what's the word frustrating, you know? Cause you wake up, like you said, you get, you get up at four o'clock, you're out the door by five 30, you've got a plan for the day. And there are always things that happen that try to mess your plan up to Derek's point, yeah. punching you in the face. So how do you handle those? I think I've over the years, I've learned how to manage that being part of my day. You know, you, you don't expect it. There's, I mean, especially what I do. I mean, it could be a simple thing as a, a nail in your tire or yeah. you to pick up a trailer. And I'm like, <laughs> you know, that, that simple, simple as that, that, that could throw you off for a couple hours. And, you know, it's, it's usually, I really anticipate something happening every time. <laughs> so, like you say, you just, he knows he's going to get punched it, in the it, face. Yeah, right? it, but, you know, I, I try not to get, you know, whether with equipment, employees, the customer, you know, there's a million things that go on that throw off your day that you're not expecting. It's kind of like, all right, you know, you just got to deal with it. Now, you seem like you've got, I've just met you, so I don't know, but you seem like you're pretty laid back. I, you, you've got to hit me the wrong way for me to raise my voice. Yeah. yeah. I Good mean, for you, I, man. I just don't, I, I don't have the time. I think, like I said, you know, being in sales for a long time, you had to adapt. You learn how to deal with, and I've had people, probably like two or three people say the same thing recently. And, you know, it, it's like, you can't really get me going and I'm very easy. Like whether uh, I try to put trust in the people mm -hmm. and then all it takes me one time not to, I don't, I won't do business with you again. You yeah. Know? And I'll continue to, I, I like to, uh, uh, throw business to people's way, you know, cause I'm always coming across people, you know, referring there for cleaning, you know, constantly, you know, anybody that I know I can, I can give business to. And then if you, like I said, you turn me on me once you're done. I have yeah. no problem with it. Yeah. And, you know, customers, you know, at the end of the day, as long as I know I'm doing the right thing, you know, customers, you deal with all sorts of customers and you try to make it right. And then sometimes you can't please everybody. Yeah. But, you know, it's, uh, I don't know, it's kind of, I guess, as I got older and I get older, it's, we just learn. Can't really get to accept patience or patience. whatever it is, yeah. Grace, except, except for my kids, I think my kids get a rise out of it. <laughs> <laughs> but how old are they? Five and eight. Okay. Yeah. Fun. Yeah, it's it's a great time right now. They're both playing, uh, both playing flag football, and uh, it's you know I'm excited for them. It's sad because you know that that's going back to it. You know when you're working so much, you don't realize what you missed until you start seeing pictures of it. <clears throat> and now that, like I said, they're playing football, and then you look at them, you're like, holy, they're not babies anymore. Mm -hmm. You know, they're out playing football, and then they're talking back to you. And, 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 you know, it's like, <laughs> I'm not it, quite it's, there it, yet, but I will be. You will so, be. Yeah. I mean, it's it's so fun because, you know, uh, you know, they used to jump off the top of my bed when they were younger, and they used to jump. Now they're up there, and they're like, they're hitting their head on the ceiling. I'm like, you guys, you guys yeah. used to stand up there. You couldn't even reach up and touch the ceiling, but that's how fast time goes. I'm like, yeah. you know, my oldest one being eight, and, you know, it's nice to see because they're, they're great kids and, uh, you know, they want to they wanna work with me. And I just, you know, hopefully uh, someday they will. I'm sure they will. It's a, it's a nice, it's a good business to continue on growing and, and pass it down. And hopefully they, uh, they will work. You know, you have this hope that, you know, you can teach your kids to work 
hard. You know, I'm, I'm, I, I like to think so, like you know, an old school way. You know, I went to Siena. Um, I was, you know, I worked really hard going through school. I did not, it did not come easy. And I am not going to give things to my kids. Mm -hmm. you know, they're going to work for it as hard as I did. And, you know, that's hard because, you know, to see, you know, from where I came through and all the struggles I had over the years to go to our mat, um, you know, I'm, I, my kids are going to, they're not, I, I want to make it so my kids don't have the same struggles, but they work as hard as I did. Yeah. And they put their focus towards, you know, go to school and do, you know, work as hard as you possibly can, figure things out, give you an opportunity, but you're, it's not going to be given to you, you know? So you hope that they, they see things and you can teach them and, you know, a good hard work ethic. Cause like I said, at the end of the day, you know, if you want to have a successful business or life, it takes work and, you know, yeah, you, you have hope that your kids, I don't know if you have kids or not. I got four. I don't know. So, you know, <laughs> you know, so I know I get it, man. And my youngest one just smashed our television. Nice. So we, it's a funny story, man. We've got, uh, We've got two huge flat screen TVs in our house, one in the bedroom, one in the living room. We had the one in the bedroom for about a month and he had this stick on like a broom handle. I don't know where he got it. He comes through and smashes that freaking thing. Right. So that TV's out. It's been done for like a year and a half, just hanging on the wall. Right. It's dead art. So the other day I get a text message from Kristen. She's like, yeah, uh, so we're, we're, we don't have a TV anymore. I'm like, what? She's like, yeah, he took like one of his like, you know, little matchbox cars and the kids three, he's got an arm on him. He hooked that thing, hit the TV, dead mass, smashed it. It won't even turn on. I was like, oh, I'm like, you know what? Let's get rid of the televisions altogether. So we're, we're now in know-how. I'm like, you know, it's $4,000 for the TV. He's like, I don't want to replace that. And, and I love the fact that we don't have TVs anymore. So we're, we're, not, we're out of the television business. It's freaking hilarious, man. But yeah, the kids. It's crazy. Never a dumb moment. Yeah. So Dustin, what are you, and we've had uh, you know a few guests obviously have been on and some have gone to college, some haven't. What are your thoughts on on college these days? <sighs> no, it's funny. I had this conversation with my wife. You know, I don't believe that you need to go to school to be successful. You know, my my kids, they're both you know really hard workers. And I push them to, you know, do well in school, but I don't, I don't believe it's necessary to go to college. I mean, I know you went to school, I went to school, you know, I could have done just the same in the medical business. If I didn't have a degree, they wouldn't have let me in, you know, yeah. to, to get to that point. But that it, it didn't mean that I couldn't do it. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's, um, you know, the, the, the hard part about, running a business is, you know, the capital, you, know, you talk about, you know, will I make it this year, you know, financially? And if you don't have the capital to keep reinvesting and growing your business, that's the hardest thing. So yeah. that's, you know, there's a million people out there with ideas and are probably capable of running a business, but you know, that's, that's one of the hard things, you know, it's, I think with, with school, you know, going through school, I, when I went to Siena, um, you know, I struggled going through there to get average grades, you know, and probably one of the, the, the classes I excelled at most was business management. You know, it was a couple classes mm -hmm. I did really well and to got along with the teachers in, and, but that was it, you know, mm -hmm. and you know, it, it all depends on what you want to do too. You know, if you want to go to be a doctor or a lawyer, then you got to go to school. Yeah. You know what I mean? But is it necessary if you have a, you know, all, all a bunch of good friends of mine, you know, some of them didn't go to school and they got great businesses, you know, it's, it, it, it's yeah. not needed, but it's all, you know, what's your, what's your goal? Is your goal to be, um, you know, to make money or mm -hmm. is it to be, you know, is that not important? It, it, it's kind of all really what you want to do. It just, you know, it's for me to do what I want to do. And, and, and if I didn't do what I want to do, then I couldn't have financially backed myself with my own business. So that, that's kind of what it did. Yeah. I, I was lucky at that point. And, you know, so do you need it? No. It really kind of all depends what you want to do. Yeah. I, I mean, I think that the blue collar industries really offer a lot of opportunities for people 
whether you have a college degree or not. I think it's one of the great things about blue collar is, you know, I, I know a ton, a ton of people, hundreds of business owners that I've met over the years that are in blue collar industries that they didn't go to college. They, you know, but they, maybe they went to trade school, maybe they did an apprenticeship, or maybe they just worked from the time they were 16. And then when they were 30, they decided that, you know, Hey, I've been working for whoever construction for the last 15 years and I want to try it on my own. And I've got all these skills that I've developed, uh, over the years. So it's, yeah. Yeah. We've seen, you know, Anthony Caruso, he didn't, he didn't yeah. go to college and started building his first house just out of high school. And then, you know, we've had, I think he said he didn't even finish high school. Yeah, if I remember the episode, I think yeah, he said that he got his GED. It was, I could a, be wrong about that. Don't quote me, but he's got a great story. Yeah. Um, and then there's my, like guys like Matt Roberts who, you know, water, he's from Waterford, Waterford guy. I, I learned and uh, he went to school and now he's on the project management side. So, yeah. you know, I think the goal of the, the show and the podcast here over time is to just show these kids that there's an opportunity, whether you want to go to school, whether you're not, or whether you don't, you know, it might not be a good fit for you, but there's still opportunity. So, so. much opportunity in blue collar industries. For sure. I, I definitely think that, you know, there's a lack. Where, where the advantage is right now is there's just such a lack of trades like your plumbers, your welders, electricians. But guess what? That's where the money's at yeah. because there's yeah. such a demand for it yeah. and there's such a low supply for it. You know, and it's like, you know, it's like my business. It's that, you know, if it's not generational kids that continue to grow the business, there's not a lot of new guys get into it. Yeah. So mm -hmm. that reduces the, the, the supply while there's still a, a, a drastic demand um, for the need mm -hmm. for every industry. So, you know, over time, the guys that are, you know, in survival of the fittest, right? As long yeah, as yeah. Make it through, you know, the demand is still going to be there and the supply is only going to go down. Yeah, it seems definitely uh, that blue collar. Supply just keeps going down and down and down, man. Oh, Demand's yeah. huge. Yeah. Definitely a problem we got to fix for sure. Yeah. Uh, so you get up at four o'clock in the morning. You got a, you got a crazy morning routine. You're doing some Wim Hof breathing out in the snow. And <laughs> I think he's a yoga guy. No, <laughs> no. I, uh, it's just, you know, I, I'm up, out, eat something like I said, not sometimes when it gets going, it's just by the time we get. You know, the truck's going to get there. I like to get or, you know, get organized, get the truck's going, get to this, you know, job by seven and get going. And it's just, you know, an eight hour, nine hour day. Just, you know, we try to be in on the job at seven and out by three thirty, four o'clock if we possibly can. But, you know, we don't stop. So it's uh, during, like I said, during the season, it's, it's nonstop. Mm -hmm. You know, my Saturdays and Sundays are jammed up, you know, trying to, uh, get jobs done, people like get in and out, you know, as fast as possible as long as yep. the job's getting done right. But like you said, a, a 12 or 15 hour day is, is nothing, nothing to, you know, to get through and do. Sorry, I just want to check the thing on there. All of a sudden I had a vision that I didn't hit record and <laughs> really a nightmare. Not again. I, did, I know, I did hit record though. Oh. Yeah, it was fine. In the, in the beginning, Derek and I went, I, I kept doing stupid things like not hitting record on a mic or something silly. I don't know. There was first 10 episodes. There was some goof every time, you know, but, um, better with every episode. That's, that's right. Goal. That's right. That's Listen, Andy Frisella, he had Tim Grover on his podcast the other day. Did you hear that? I, yeah, I did. And they were talking about like, Andy said, he's like, I had to do 150 episodes before I didn't feel like I was the worst podcast to us yeah. in the universe. So we're a far cry from that, but. We're getting there. Life's good. Getting better every time. What, uh, you know, you said you're doing a lot of marketing, a lot of advertising. So if, if someone's listening, what, what, what advice would you give them about, you know, where you're spending your dollars, how you're spending your dollars as far as that goes? That's kind of a secret. I can't. Oh, no. You, yeah. You don't have no, to answer no, no, that no, one. No, it's fine. I know um, it's a question that everybody asks because it seems to be different depending on who you talk to. I, I, I do my advertising all. So I, I'm big when I, when I started my when I came up with a design for my logo for my business I did it on a napkin and then I had a guy I met he was a uh, graphic artist and he did a great job like it was perfect and I wanted someone to say this is 
this is who it is. I want to make my name a brand and mm-hmm. I want my logo to tell me, you know, people, there's no disguising what my business is. So then anytime Manny goes buying a truck in orange, they're going to know who I am. Mm-hmm. And I put everything on every advertisement that I do, whether it's Google, Google AdWords, Facebook, it's all over the place, you know? So that's where I spent a lot of, a lot of dollars in those areas. And, you know, I, I think the difference with the, you know, older companies, digital marketing is, is a big thing. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? You can, you know, you want to get your name out there. Facebook is a great, um, Facebook is a great. Uh, it's not me. Oh, it's not me, guys. Thing. No, you're fine. As long as it's your phone, that's okay. The marketing's <laughs> working. <laughs> that's right. Phone drinking, baby. Cha-ching. I was going to say, I, th- I could have sworn I turned my ringer off after that first. <laughs> Yeah, so like I said, Google AdWords, Facebook, uh, you know, I'm not big a, uh, of, uh, I used to do a lot of, when I first started a long time ago in another business, I used to do the penny saver ads. Yeah. I used to make up 10,000 flyers and put them in the penny saver account. And, uh, you know, kind of word of, also word of mouth, you know, mm-hmm. it's people, once you start doing good work and, you know, people refer you and, you know, I like said, you just got to keep your name out there, keep relevant and. You know, put, uh, market your business, market, you know, put your jobs out there before and after and create demand. You know, that's what I do and it seems to, seems to work. Yeah. Uh, I know we're, we got to wrap it up. I'm just, uh, one of the last questions I usually ask, but before I do, Derek, you got anything else that we, uh, that we're missing? No, I think we, I was going to ask about a typical day, but Dustin, already covered that and jumped right into it so yeah. i guess one thing you know as you as you grow where are you looking for and where are you looking to find new talent talent's employees yeah just if any if any of the youth are, are listening you know and wanted to i one one of the guys a new guy we just hired he's actually go back to the boat tech he actually reached you know a lot of people send they they reach out to me for a job and you know there's got to be a, you know, there's got to be, a, you got to be able to operate, you got to be able to have a CDL. And that, that's kind of like, there's not, there's such a demand for that now of CDL drivers, and there's not a lot of supply, mm-hmm. right? And one of the guys I'm just picking up, he's a kid, 17 years old, going to Votech problem, and it'd be a heavy equipment operator. So he's going to start working me this that's great. year while he's going to school and he's nice. going to get a CDL. So mine's a little bit different. If you, if you can't operate, you know, or have a CDL, it's very hard in my business. But, you know, if you, uh, if, you know, we're looking for laborers, you know, it's, you got to be able to work hard. That, that's, yeah. that, that, that seems to be the problem now, you know, finding guys that actually want to work and work hard. And it yeah. doesn't matter what you pay them. You think you pay them, you know, you pay them good and, you know, it's not enough. And now you can go to McDonald's and make 20 bucks an hour where when I first started working, I think my first job I think I was like 13, 14 years old and we were, I was working with a Mason and we were, I mean, literally I would work eight, 10 hour days, would come home with a split and headache and I was making 11 bucks an hour. Right. Like, I mean, and, and it was just so bad. Now it's kind of like, you can't get a kid to roll out of bed without making 20 bucks. Well, they're making all that money on Twitch gaming and yeah, oh, yeah, shit like that. <laughs> it, it's, it's painful to see, but you know, that's what it is. So, uh, so to wrap it up, uh, one last question I always try to ask everybody as they come on is, you know, if you were going to give one piece of advice to someone listening, uh, or, you know, just tell them one thing that they should be doing or could be doing, uh, that's going to make or break them being successful in blue collar industries, what would it be? I think if you do good work, you know, be very, pick one thing and be the best at it. Yeah. You know, you know, a lot of companies are all over the place, but if you could be good at one thing, you can start small, you know, like we're getting in the paving and we're going to start with a small project and make sure it's done right. We're, we're subbing out guys to come in and help us out to do the perfect, you know, job mm-hmm. and then grow. And you don't have to go big. Just start. If you got a main job, find something you really like to do. Do a couple of them, make some money off it, and then just learn and grow and learn and grow. And, you know, I'm a big advocate for people starting businesses and, you know, going on their own. And But it's uh, it's not easy, you know, but you just got to 
you know, work hard, find a niche, and excel at it. Be the best. Be the best. That's it. Well, we appreciate you coming on, man. If, uh, yeah, if, thanks, Dustin. Yeah, if people want to find you, uh, they want to hire you or they want to, you know, reach out to you, where, where do they find? Uh, everywhere you look. <laughs> uh, You'll man, see the dump man, truck going down. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Uh, Facebook, Instagram, uh, Google. We're there. No TikTok yet? No. Nah, <laughs> Not yet. Uh, everybody, thanks for listening. Uh, you can find us, obviously, on one of the many websites that we get put on, but also our main website, which is bluecollarstartup.io. Uh, not only do we have all of our episodes listed there, but we also have our portal where, you know, if you guys are out there and you're trying to find not just the episode information, but also looking for some other information on running your business, starting your business, uh, we've got a bunch of, you know, let's call them experts because that's what they are that, you know, come in and uh, do a little Q&A session with Derek and, and give some really good information on, you know, everything from financial sides of your business, operations, marketing, I mean, you name it, uh, you know, we're giving it away. It's all free. It's all free. We just want to, you know, help everybody grow and, and do better. So uh, check it out. That's bluecollarstartup.io. Uh, we're on Instagram, but I never post. And you can find us on uh, everywhere you get podcasts, which is YouTube, Rumble, Apple, Google, and Spotify. So thanks for listening. Derek, Dustin, thank you. Thank you.